uh, we used to get National Geographic magazine, so of course they always had on pictorials about Africa. And I always considered myself at that time, was a, I was a graceful runner. So it re, kind of reminded me of the animals that, that were running uh, on the Serengeti. So that looked like um, a ticket out of where I was living, you know, because of all seeing the Olympic athletes um, being, you know, famous and winning medals. When I was first diagnosed with cancer, it was very confusing for my family and me um, because we had no knowledge of cancer. So as a, a young child, I felt confused, um, somewhat afraid and not knowing you know, what would face me um, after I was told that um, I would have to have my left leg amputated above the knee. You know, I didn't know any person who had lost their, their limb or who in fact, to my knowledge, had had cancer. But I also think that as a child that you are, you're ever the optimist, right? Because all you know about is living. So it's about breathing and moving forward. When I, I came home from the hospital, I started to discover, you know, things that perhaps I thought I, I couldn't do. Of course, I couldn't run because I didn't have two legs, but I had the crutches so I could run on the crutches. So, you know, that sort of solved that issue. So I learned to carry my books on the crutches and to, and for lunch in the cafeteria, I learned how to manage carrying my own tray. I always think of myself as being resilient and resiliency was what brought me through surviving cancer. I think living long-term with cancer is that you have to First of all, you gotta, you gotta love yourself and you gotta acknowledge your fears. After having the amputation, um, it did short circuit my dream of, of becoming an Olympic athlete. And I always say that when one dream um, dies, then you dream another dream. And the other dream was to, to make a difference in my world. Um, for people of color, I knew that there were a lot of disparities and, and we've known that for 40 years that, you know, the research has always shown that. So my mission that I've embraced for myself is to um, make sure I'm on the forefront of educating doctors and medical professionals about health equity and to, um, to have them to be sensitive to the needs of their patients and that um, the, the desired outcome is for the best experience for everybody on a level playing field. And I encourage other people to do the same because as I said before, if you're not at the table, then you won't be represented. And so the, the more we know, you know, the better that we can um, make life better for people. You know, when I think about being um, a child in the basement of um, a 200 bed hospital, one of the things I, I do always remember is that at the end of the the corridor, there was this, this, this space with the window with light. And I always was attracted to that light. And I used that, those moments as, as reflecting or projecting that, you know, this wasn't always going to, to be my experience or, or my lot in life for that, you know, things would in fact get better. I believe in light. I always believe in, you know, doing the good. It, it's kind of amazing that, you know, I would have that type of realization so young, but, um, you know, that was what, what kept me going.